you know, I think people associate um, human trafficking with like maybe like the movie Taken, where it's you know you're you're in a you're in a foreign land, you get kidnapped by the bot, you know, the Serbians and, White and scenario. yeah, exactly, and and you're sold to some rich sheik sultan and stuff like that, where it's um. You know, human trafficking, we can, you can fight human trafficking, but you're not going to the strip club on Friday night with your buddies. You know, you can fight human trafficking yep. by not, um, you know, paying an OnlyFans subscription. You know, you can fight human trafficking uh, uh, by not clicking on Pornhub. Those are all things that, you know, every man has the ability to, it's, it's a spirit, it's, it's a spiritual battle of, of not succumbing to your own lusts and cutting off the uh, demand. You know, without the demand, there's no need for a supply. And there's, you know, that's what, uh, you know, and, and the fact that men don't recognize this as a men's issue is, is really where it kind of, you know, why it's such an exploding issue in this country and why there's such a moral decay in our culture. Very good points, Ryan. Very good points. And and I think you, you, you hit the nail on the head there. People hear human trafficking and yeah, you, you think about Taken, they think about, you know, Epstein Island, they think about all of these things, but, and I, I'm not one to define it. You guys are, you know, much better than me. Um, but my, you know, my understanding of it is, is, is kind of what Ryan said. It's a very vague, broad and ambiguous thing that you can contribute to in ways that you don't even know you're contributing to, or you're not able to even identify it as human trafficking. So, you know, you bring up that point. Why don't you guys take this opportunity uh, and define, if you can, the best that you can, what what is human trafficking? Yeah. So the Department of Homeland Caleb. Security has a very large definition um, with force, fraud, or coercion in there. Uh, the, talking about uh, different classes, whether it be race, age, gender, everyone can be trafficked, but it really boils down to someone exploiting another's vulnerabilities for commercial gain. Mm -hmm. So uh, like all businesses, uh, human trafficking is a business, unfortunate as it mm -hmm. is to say, and it, it has a business model and uh, demand is that foundational piece of that business model. Um, and so kind of like what we talked about earlier, the biggest fuel for demand is porn, our biggest fuel of demand is pornography. So it's, it's just a systemic, um, it, it starts from the foundation up and the foundation of it is, is lust, right? It's yeah. lust in anything that enables a man or people to, to, uh, you know, access that lust and amplify that lust. And then perhaps they start seeking ways to, to act on these things. Right. It, it, goes, yeah. it goes back to that. The, I mean, nowadays it's a common term, but just dopamine. So the, yeah. just the pleasure chemical in the yeah. brain, there's a bunch of studies just on how dopamine is affected in skydiving, bungee jumping, taking the yeah. SATs, but then also pornography. And yeah. it's essentially just a domino. The, more you consume it, the more and more you have to consume it to get that same level of dopamine mm -hmm. hit or the more extreme forms of it. So, um, yeah. so yeah. Well, let me sure. ask you guys this real quick. Considering, um, you know, we were talking about pornography and how it's it, it's essentially the soil that all of this stuff is, is, is spurting from, right? Because I think it is. Um, I point to evolution theory also, but that's – I'm not going to go off on a rabbit trail down there. However – um, pornography, lust, and, and these, these young men are coming up and their, 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 their faces and their phones, like their lives are right here. Right. And being that pornography is so accessible to everyone. Have you guys considered, or maybe you are, you know, talking to legislatures, talking to, to attorneys, seeing what can be done to, to age restrict or limit the access of pornography in the state of Florida. And I bring that up because in Texas, uh, they just passed legislation that and with with pretty strict age rate age requirement um, uh, measures in place for someone to access a, a website like Pornhub. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there is there is a lot of that happening. Um, there is legislation that is happening. I know some of the folks that are actually doing that. Mm. Um, and um, and so they and I think Texas is a good example. Uh, you just need one state that starts this and then other states yeah. that are like similar to Texas will follow suit. I think Florida is no, not far behind. Um, go ahead. 
I know Louisiana has, has done a lot of um I've heard yeah just like yep. Louisiana also. I heard something about Louisiana. Yeah. So, so I, I don't think we're far behind. I just think there's there is a there is a there may be a little bit when you're talking legislation, there might be a little bit of a uh, a delay from from that side just because they're going to watch and see if, you know, there's a, you know, uh, a lawsuit that comes out and there will be, there will uh, be. you know, but we all yeah. know, I mean, listen, porn, Pornhub has already been like, they've been exposed. I mean, federally, they've already been found guilty for human trafficking incidences. Mm. That's already been, that's already happened. And so these guys are just, they're, they're in for the profit. Uh, so, and, so, and so like Pornhub has about, been, I'm sorry. Porn, Pornhub has been found federally to contribute to human trafficking. Yeah, yeah, they they were they were sued and found guilty of, of I did not know uh, that. human trafficking charges. So mm -hmm. the big thing with uh, I mean Pornhub specifically is that you, you would think that hey, if someone submits a video to be on Pornhub, that Pornhub is going to look into the individuals in that video to make sure that they're above the age of eighteen. Because if someone's below the age of eighteen, it's human trafficking right off the bat. Yeah. Um, Yep. So you would think Pornhub looks into that. Pornhub actually just looks into the person submitting the video. Oh, no so way. it doesn't look into the people in that video. And also, I mean, a, a great example of this is if you go at the cat, there's a bunch of categories in Pornhub, thousands of categories. Mm -hmm. And one of the categories is like young teens, like all that other stuff. So it's just like, hey, they say that they do this, but then you, you see it right there that that's not happening. And then you also know, Hey, they're only checking these age requirements. The person just submitting the video, not even. So it's so it's, it's. They were uh in twenty uh so they were fined in twenty twenty three and end of twenty twenty three. To your point is uh they were fined one point eight million dollars for sex trafficking. You know, <laughs> I know it's like for them. I mean, uh, that's it's nothing. Um, um, it, but, no, that's but, a couple you know, hours worth of. Yeah, yeah cl couple clicks. Production. A couple clicks. That's all it is, right? So, but you see this with Twitter, you see this with with uh, other social medias. You know, I I don't know if you guys watched that Senate testimony of uh, Zuckerberg on Facebook. That was like last month or something. But man, you know, proof in the pudding. These guys brought these guys brought the receipts and said, "Hey, you are in, 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 enabling and dang near promoting." human trafficking and child pornography and some of the victims of this were sitting right behind Mark Zuckerberg mm -hmm. Zuckerberg and mm -hmm. he got up and apologized to them now I you know I'm not going to go into that I don't like the dude I don't like that stuff but I mean it, what I'm getting at is this it is intertwined with all of our society so there's yeah. there's a great reason. I mean, human trafficking is one of the. I mean, they used to say that human trafficking was third criminal, the third largest criminal enterprise in the world, next to drugs and and arms. You know, but I I would tend to tell you that those people that are selling drugs and selling um uh you know guns, they're probably selling humans too. I mean, because that's the one thing that you can sell over and over again. You can only sell a wow. drug once. You can only sell a gun once. You know, so humans, they just all over yep. and over again. Yep. These things are exactly, intertwined. I was going to say exactly that. You can sell a bag of cocaine one time. You can sell a person. Ugh, dude, it's hard to even say. It's, just, it's, it's, it's horrible. It's uh, absolutely atrocious. And that's why it's important to get this message out, to continue to remind people that that's someone's daughter. Someone's kid. I mean, like, yeah. what are we doing? Like, even for men. When when you, when you see a, an attractive woman, do you look twice? Right. Stop it. Right. I mean, I get it. In the one look, I mean, you can't not see a person, but you don't have to turn your head. Well, it's a it's conscious how, choice. It, it, it's how are you looking at women as a man, right? If you're looking at women as a sex object, which is what society has conditioned young men to do, right? You're just a sex object. They, they've given women numbers. You're a one through 10. They've made the the terms body count. Cool. Uh, you know, go get your body count up, whatever. Uh, and it's things through, you know, yeah. only fans, uh, pornography and stuff like that. They have dehumanized women through, through this, yes. this, it, you, you know what I'm saying? So, it, you know, so I it's, say it's, that, it's, 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 it is legislative. We do need legislative efforts, you know, to come all the way back full circle. We need legislative efforts to help uh, squash some of this evil that's happening. But it's also personal responsibility. 
And that's why I'm saying it's not just do we go petition Congress to to make changes, and we should, and we are, Um, but we must also own it. Like Jesus said, coming all the way back to Jesus said, whatever he did to one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine. Yeah. If we treat those that are that are around us like they're like they belong to us, like they're family, we would never want that to happen to our family. You know, I I see um, human trafficking and it's a different sin, but I see it, you know, under the same light as many different sins. Uh, You know, we hear uh, the, the term racism all the time. Right. And it's a very vague and ambiguous term, and now it can apply to anything. And it's like, you know, they're they're ramming legislation, you know, to, to push forward agenda. And it's like, well, what do you suggest? What legislation legislates the heart? And I and I'm I see this in the same way. How do you legislate the heart? Well, you can't, but we can change the heart with Jesus Christ. So that's that's mm-hmm. that's the only real change here, right? You guys come in. Right and educate and, and, and show them who, who Jesus is, but you also provide the services and the protective measures yep. to pull well, them from that. Yep. I will say, um, uh, you know, to a little bit counter that point is, uh, you know, St. Thomas Aquinas, uh, you know, said of the law that the law is the teacher. So, you know, our, you know, our, our political leaders um, do need to step up and, and, and teach society by passing laws that actually do make some people stop and think, oh, why, you know, this is against the law. Why is it against the law? And really think about what they're doing, you know, yeah. with their time. You know? Well, and I think it's, yeah. I think that's why we need both. I mean, to your yeah. point, Ryan, that's why I'm saying yeah, yeah. we need both. Not, it's not Absolutely. either or, it's both. No, it's, it's both. Yeah, it's both. It's both. You have to change it at the, at the heart level with Jesus Christ. And you have to have good laws uh, as protective measures uh, to, to prevent furtherance of this, this nonsense. Um, you know, it's and and I was gonna say something, but I want to ask you guys something real quick. Um, so you guys are in Florida, right? And I deal with a good friend of mine owns a a nonprofit that deals with exactly what you guys are dealing with. It's called True North. Shout out to True North. Um, I helped them establish that uh, LLC. They asked me to be on the board. I had to decline because of <clears throat> a tragedy in my my life. Just took me in a different path for a second. Um, but you know, do you link up with people outside of of the state of Florida? Uh, do you mm-hmm. do you guys do anything outside of the state of Florida? Because I can, I would love to put you in contact with with uh, you know the, the the executive director of True North. Um, you guys are about the same size operation, it sounds like, and you got very similar missions, and I just think it would be a healthy thing. Yeah, yeah, we interact with uh, organizations outside of the state all the time, uh, and and I do, and I love collaboration, so I'm I'm always I always welcome those connections, um, and 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 some of them are just friendly connections where we can encourage one another uh, yeah. to continue to do the the good work we're each doing in our individual places. You know, but in terms of solving the housing issue for women who have been trafficked, that's something we're going to do here locally first. We're going to we're going to build up the state of Florida to make sure we've got enough housing so we never turn another woman away. Uh, but it is something that we have a long term goal to provide housing throughout other states as well. Um, so that's an important factor. So having relationships with other organizations and we do sometimes, like I said, it's a, just a friendly encouragement kind of conversation. Sometimes maybe a consultant role, either they're consulting yep. us or we're consulting them depending yep. on where, where each of us are at in our different phases of the nonprofit work. And so, yeah, we love connecting. Yep. I will definitely put you in contact. Um, uh, with Heidi Wilt, the executive director of that. She's a dear friend of mine, her and her husband. Um, and they've been established for probably about the same amount of time as you guys. Um, but you guys could just talk, I mean, and see what comes about it and see if there's any place that sure. you can. And, and like you said, just even encouragement, you guys are on the same battlefield right now. Um, mm-hmm. and, and getting back to a thought that my brain went past earlier re- regarding the legislation, it's like, you know, I'm not from Florida. I pay attention to politics. I'm, I'm deeply, deeply, uh, you know, pay attention to politics, especially right now in our nation. Um, Ron DeSantis, it's like, if anything's going to get done, it's going to get done with him. Right. And, it, you know, it, it appears to be an urgent matter. So, 
utilize the guy while he's there is all I'm saying. And I know you guys are, we talked about it, uh, but man, it's an opportunity mm -hmm. and, and anyone listening to this, pray, pray with us that some of these legislative measures get through and, and, and get through the, the, the Florida Congress and get, get, get onto the governor's desk. Like, let's go, come on, do something, help out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and thank you for that. I, I am grateful for, um, I'm grateful for the governor and those who are serving under his leadership. He is specifically Attorney General Moody. She has been a, a fierce advocate. Yeah. This has been one of her, her sticking points is standing on, um, is standing and towing the line of saying no more in her own life and, and in our state that we're not going to put up with human trafficking happening. Uh, this is just um, something that's got to stop. Uh, right. And so, and I, I appreciate their their resolve. And it's it is not a it's not a sprint by any means. It is a marathon, uh, maybe even an Ironman, um, because it's 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 a lot of heavy lifting. And uh, I'm grateful for those partnerships. Yeah. So well, it looks like we're coming up on our time here. Um, but I, what I want to what I want to do is give you guys an opportunity to to what can what can Adam Revival. And Adam Revival listeners do to help you guys out in any way, shape, or form to support you guys. We're going to put your links and stuff in the description below. We're going to promote this. We're going to get it out there to as many eyes and ears as we can. Um, but what can they do? Do you guys have, you know, how can people donate to this cause? How can people contribute to this cause? Whatever it is. Uh, well, thank you for the invitation to share about that. I'll first start by saying, Going back to what I, I, I started with, we exist to connect you to care for the least of these. So it's not just about what you can do for us, but it's about what we can do for you. Um, because we know it's going to take all of us to make an impact in spaces like foster care, poverty, and human trafficking. Mm. And, um, and we want to help you do that. So um, one of the ways that we can help you do that, no matter where you are, you can head over, head over to our website, declarenomore.com. Um, uh, and you can find us on social media and all those handles, declare no more. Um, declare no more. But if you would like to give, and we would welcome you giving to the work, um, as little as $12 a month can help change the life of somebody else who's in a, in a very dark place. Mm -hmm. um, and so we've got it down to $12 a month. It's very easy. It's an easy entry. You can do that. You can become part of our $12 giving club. And uh, we would love and welcome that. Um, every nonprofit needs those monies to help continue to do the good work they're doing. And so I would just say, let us help you, but you can also be a part of doing something like that if you feel compelled to give. Caleb, do you have anything you want to add? Yeah. An another big thing is I just kind of Jamie hinted on it is we're here for the community as well is just get educated. Uh, like uh, yeah. Ryan talked about earlier, it's human trafficking is usually perceived as a Hollywood depiction of the taken scenario of human trafficking. And it really doesn't look like that. So thankfully with technology nowadays, Kate and I, we provide a lot of virtual trainings. You can also find those on our website, totally free training lasts less than an hour. That's with a little bit of discussion and questions on the end, but that's when we really dive into the facts and statistics, showing you, showing people that it is a problem here in the United States, what it looks like, signs to spot, resources available. Um, so. Yeah, you, you can get trained anywhere in, in uh, the United States. I mean, it, really anywhere else. We tend to focus on Florida because that's just where we're at with statistics about that. But we cover nation statistics, global statistics as well. Mm -hmm. So, and we're not the only ones doing training either. There's lots of people yeah. doing them, but it, it, please, you know, I, I appreciate Caleb adding that, that in there. I mean, we, we want to help educate people because that's where community transformation happens. Is at the mobile is at the intersection of education and mobilization. Okay. You got anything else to add, Ryan? No, this has been an excellent conversation and uh, definitely something I'm I'm actually on their site now trying to uh, donate. So. <laughs> so um, yeah. Well, thank you. So so we appreciate that. You know, one more time, uh, declare no more dot com. DeclareNoMore.com. Go there. Donate if you can. We know times are tough, but this is, I mean, there is no more righteous cause than this. Go there. Support them if you can. At a minimum, go there and utilize their free resources to educate yourself on this matter. Look. That's right. 
we had, and you guys recall the Sound of Freedom movie, right? Yep. The Sound yep. of Freedom yep. movie came mm-hmm. out six months ago, and there was so much support for that movie. We need that support here to apply it in real life. If you watch the Sound of Freedom and you supported that and your heart hurt watching that movie, declare no more.com. Go there and support these guys any way that you can. Get educated, get into the fight. This is Dr. Stephen Lowe. We're with Jamie Kent, Kayla Bell, Ryan Listerman, Adam Revival, no more. Declare no more.com. God bless you guys. Christ is the answer. <laughs>